everybody. My name is Julie Burgundy, and I'm the Public Education Coordinator at the Dole Institute of Politics in Lawrence, Kansas. And if you've joined us for other programs in the past, we've learned about the archive and been upstairs in the museum. And uh, today, our topic is top dog. What do you think that could be discussing today? Now, I wonder what it's about. Hmm. You think you see a dog by me? Yeah. <laughs> so today's theme is going to be discussing leader the dog. And here I have a poll for you, uh, a paw poll, if you would like, uh, which is kind of funny because when we uh, have straw polls we, for electing candidates and, and, and seeing in the races, this is a paw poll. So you can have a vote. You can either vote for leader of the dog or socks the cat. So I'm going to be reading their descriptions here. So vote for your favorite political pet. Leader of the dog. Leader has had a career in politics ever since he was rescued in 1985 and introduced to his new family, the Dolls. Leader enjoys long walks around Washington, D.C., rolling around in the grass, and even an occasional treat, or five, or two. <laughs> Most importantly, Leader loves his friends, including you. But we also have a contender here, who is Socks the Cat. I wonder who Socks could be. I wonder who he belongs to. So if give you a hint, Leader the Dog is owned by Senators Bob and Elizabeth Dole. But Socks the Cat, Give you a hint, has lived in the White House. And uh, also has a brother named Buddy the Dog. So Sox the Cat is actually President Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton's cat, and Secretary Clinton. Uh, and so here's his description to help you uh, have your vote. Sox the Cat, having spent a year as first cat of Arkansas and eight years as first cat of the United States, Sox is no stranger to politics. Born astray, Sox worked his way into the hearts of the Clinton family and others across the nation. His hobbies include going on adventures, bathing, and camping. So here's a fun paw poll for you. Uh, vote for your favorite political pet. And in 1996, when Senator Bob Dole was running for President of the United States, President Bill Clinton was his uh, Democratic opponent. So in the adult version <laughs> of the 1996 election, we have those two contenders. In the animal version, we have leader versus socks. And I'll give you a hint. In 1996, in the paw pool, which was by kids, uh, leader of the dog actually won. So I'm gonna put my egg into leader of the dog. And if you like cats or Socks the Cat, you could also put it into Socks. <laughs> uh, but in a real life version of the 1996 election, we do know that President Bill Clinton was successful in uh, winning a second term for presidency of the United States. And so even though Le Leader and Senator Gold didn't win in that one, Leader still won in our hearts. <laughs> and so today we're going to be talking all about and here is a picture of a leader, another picture. So there he is getting some treats from Senator Bob Dole. It looks like his Senate office. But did you know that leader wrote a book? Yeah, Leader the Dog is an accomplished author. And so today we're gonna to be looking a little bit at Follow the Leader. It is A Dog's Eye View of Washington, D.C. by Leader Dole. So Leader wrote this book. So when I read a few things, you think that this is coming from Leader the Dog. So let's start out. My journey from the shelter to the water gate. No one knows how it came to be found on New York Avenue in Washington, D.C and taken to the animal show. But there I was, no ID tags, no collar, no feature. I spent six days there and came within 24 hours of being put to sleep. 
It was the last week in November of 1984. Who would have thought that a vote on the floor of the United States Senate would mean the difference between life and death for me? A miniature schnauzer identified as number 1498 at the Washington Animal Store. Across town, Elizabeth Dole, then Secretary of Transportation, remember her? We learned how she was in charge of uh, planes and trains and cars and all that and the seatbelts. Yeah, that's the name. Uh, across town, Elizabeth was meeting with the Federal Aviation Administrator. When the door suddenly burst open, Shirley Ballard's smile required no explanation. Elizabeth knew that a signal that Bob Dole, facing four opponents and after a cliffhanger on the fifth ballot, had been elected Senate Majority Leader the 99th Congress. That's a pretty big deal. She had planned to give Bob a dog, a small fluffy one for his Christmas present, but she decided that this was the right moment and said to her assistant, Charlotte Ellis, let's get the dog right now, let's give it to him today, and we'll name him Leader. Within the hour, fate brought Charlotte Ellis to my cage, and I heard her say to the attendant at her side, I'm looking for a small dog like this one. Her eyes met mine. Then she walked over to the payphone, and I heard her say, Elizabeth, I found Bob's present. Yes, a miniature schnauzer, gray and white. He's perfect. I know you'll like him. He's so beautiful. I'll have to admit, feeling a little flattered. The attendant added, he's very well behaved. We don't see many schnauzers here, and his time is up tomorrow. No one had to draw me a picture. I knew what his time up was. Charlotte took charge, and before I could say, bow, wow, she made all the arrangements for my release. The shelter staff was happy uh, to see me leave, as I was to go. After they gave me a nice bath and dragged me off, I walked out with Charlotte, ready to start my new life and hoping that no one could see my first day on end when I thought about how close I'd come to not being here. My first stop was the Senate office building on Capitol Hill, where a press conference was being held to announce Bob Dole's election as majority leader. I waited outside in the hall. I met Elizabeth for the first time. She attached the dog name tag leader to my collar and lovingly picked me up. Then cradling me in her arms, she entered the room where I was presented to a surprise, but smile. Uh, wow. People were standing wall to wall, some with cameras or down on one knee with notepads, all smiling and talking at the same time, sounding like a room full of bees. It's obvious that canine leader meets Senate leader was not on the agenda. Surprised at the sight of me, Bob Dole smiled broadly as he realized that I was about to join the family. Everyone was looking at the three of us. Bob did have one important question for his wife. Are we allowed to have dogs at the Watergate? That's their apartment complex. Elizabeth had the answer and I loved it. I don't know, but if we can't, we'll just have to move. <laughs> wow, what a difference a day makes. I didn't know what Bob's job was. But I noticed right away that he said he sometimes would be interrupted by laughter and other times by applause and many times by both laughter and applause. Home at last. What a lucky puppy. I found love, happiness, and a perfect name. Leader Dole. In the spotlight. On this day, I had no idea where my life would be. In contrast to an undocumented puppyhood, as he was found at the shelter, my new life was beginning to be just the opposite. Cameras taking pictures of my every twist and turn, reporters writing notes about the color of my fur, the cuts of my ears, the fuzz on my feet, the size of my stubby tail, the sound of my bark, nothing was off the record. All the attention would have been, have toppled the unprepared. However, schnauzers, are born for the limelight, especially this overnight rags to riches, bulb flashing in your face type. Schnauzers can handle sudden fame without getting big head. Working like a dog. Right away, I could see that I had a big job to do. I had to get to work on time. 
it was easy for me to step up to the task because a schnauzer naturally expects to take on important responsibilities. So here he is on the job posing for a news photo. At first, it was enough for me just to show up around 8.30 a.m., greet the receptionist who hung my leash on the rack, check out the water bowl, and then await my orders. These assignments in the beginning were primary social, posing for pictures with visitors, solo photos of the leader's leader on the Capitol grounds, or the give me your paw thing, which I could do left or right, an uncommon trait not found in all breeds. Much to my dismay, I soon concluded that security in Bob's office was minimal. Outside, Capitol Police with canines patrol, but no one was protecting the inside of our offices, especially around the desks and the windows. I put my best paw forward and volunteered to guard the office so everyone else could work without fear. From strategic positions, I would walk my feet, carefully observe and report any breach. A few coworkers, though no fault of their own, uh, objected to my method of communicating. They just didn't understand that I wasn't barking. I was reporting. It didn't help matters that unlike the Capitol Police, I was denied a uniform or a badge to validate my activities. Nevertheless, the increasing importance of my job added to my self-esteem and facing a few complainers was a small price I was willing to pay. Besides, I love to watch people work. Watching is my favorite pastime. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because I want to show you some cool pictures. So here are some pictures that were in different magazines like TV Guide and Newsweek. Being on the job. This elephant we actually have here in our tent. And that pose is similar to... Uh, Senator Bob Dole wrote a book about comedy and short stories. And... Does that look similar? <laughs> yes, it does. So another picture I want to show you is, remember Leader Dole got to work around the, the Washington DC and the Capitol building, went to different buildings. Here he is out uh, with his cute little hat on in front of the United States Capitol, in front of some nice flowers. And, also, relating back to Sox and Leader, remember the 1996 election? My internet victory. So www.firstdog.com. So the 1996 presidential primaries were coming up. So remember before this happened. Although he had not yet formally announced, Bob had long been referred to as the front run. Our respite from the public eye was suddenly interrupted when my computer friends learned that Sox had a homepage on the internet. As expected, they declared, if Sox has a homepage, then Leader should have a homepage, period. Now to give you some background, in 1996, the internet was not as big or as awesome as the internet is today. For instance, of how you're seeing me right now on the screen. Back then, the internet looked a little different. Uh, and so, so Bob was not yet a candidate in that election, but that didn't stop me from gearing up just in case. First, they needed a website domain. And after Bob announced his candidacy for president on April 10th, 1995, we were all set to go. If elected first dog, my promise was to work night and day, except for naps, to show the world that I am more than just a furry face. Our slogan, put a leader in the White House, started appearing on badges, buttons, and t-shirts. And here is a picture of that very first website. And remember, there's that paw poll I discussed. And remember, I said leader won. So with 55% of the vote, leader beat Sox the Cat. Pretty cool. So now I want to share some pictures of Leader with you. I know I've shared a few so far, but let me pull them up here. Share some cute pictures. 
So here we have leader with his sign. The day he got him in 1984. And then here's that press conference. Remember in the story where all the photographers had notepads and everything? So here he is presented to the world. And another picture of that. All smiles, even though Bob might be a little surprised. <laughs> and there he is around the grounds doing his tour of duty in front of the Capitol. And there he's in the office. Looks like he's getting a treat. I bet Leader gets lots of treats. And look at that fashion show photo. Looking pretty good. And there's that same picture. Remember that leather elephant that we have in the archives? There is that photo shoot probably for that uh, book cover shoot. And it looks like he's showing Senator Dole who's boss. Looks like uh, leader is the top dog here. So sadly, uh, leader did pass away in 1999. Remember, he was born about 1982. So he was about two years old when they got him in 1984. And so he did live a great long life. But actually, this photo here is of leader two. So the Dole family really loves Minister Schnauzers, and they really love the name Leader. So presented is Leader 2. He was born in 1999, and he is actually the grandson of Leader 1. So we have a Leader lineage going on. And there's another cute picture of Leader 2. And here's actually an object. So remember in the archives, we have lots of objects. And here's a bandana that leader one was given to wear for the 1996 election. But I also want to show you some objects. So I'm going to stop that and switch you around here. Because we have some objects from archives. And it looks like we have leader's toy box here. Pretty cool with some toys. Looks like he has a hamburger and a lighthouse and a blue ring and a bone. Those are all great things to chew on in the Senate office, maybe at home or at the Capitol. And here is his top dog water dish. You can see that. And then a very lovingly personalized hand painted looks like food bowl that says leader on it and then over here looks like we have the placemat that that top dog water dish sat on so we won't get water all over <laughs> and then uh we also have other schnauzer things in the archive which i mentioned and then in the book it said that they did photo shoots and things for the 1996 election. So here are some of those campaign buttons. So we have leader for first dog. We have leader dole, it says put a leader in the White House. And then these two objects I pulled because they're talking about Senator Bob Dole's uh, humanitarian efforts for the Humane Society and animal rights and all of that. So here's the 1983 Humanitarian of the Year Award, uh, given in recognition and appreciation of Senator Dole's concern for animals and continuing efforts to prevent and relieve their suffering. So this was given from uh, Florida Humane Society. And then this here is a medallion. And on the front, it says, we need a boundless ethics, which will include animals also. It's called the Swite Shirt Medal. And if I pick it up, notice I'm wearing gloves because when we uh, work with objects, we do want to wear gloves. And on the back, it says Animal Welfare Institute Award to Robert Dole, 1986. And it's quite heavy and it's pretty thick. 
But around the outside, what animals do you see? What animals do you observe on this metal? On the, in the words, it says reverence for life. I see a dog. What other animals do you see? I see a rooster. I see a cat. I see a pigeon. And a mouse. And a monkey down here. And a baby chick. Good looking at all those animals. And this is just the number that we give it to in the archives so we know where to find it. So I'm going to put that back down. And I also want to share with you some other uh, leaders. So we talked about leader one and leader two. Well, we also have some of the current Dole family. And here is Blazer. Blazer was born in 2010. And Blazer is actually the son of Leader 2 and the great grandson of Leader 1. So we have a whole lineage there. And Blazer is also a father to Walter. Walter was born in 2018. He is the son of Blazer. And also, uh, which makes him the fifth generation from the original Leader One. So he's the great, great grandson of Leader One who wrote that book. And here is Leader Three. So as I said, Senator, uh, the Dole family really loves schnauzers. They really love the name Leader. So here we have Leader Three. And he is uh, adopted from the Humane Society. So he's not uh, a part of the leader lineage, but he is a beloved member of the family called Leader Three. And he was born in 2011. So we have all three dogs. We have Walter, Blazer, and Leader. And uh, these all live with Bob and Elizabeth in uh, the Watergate, just like the book said, in Washington, D.C. Big happy family. And here's a picture from uh, last spring with all the three dogs and it looks like they love getting treats, especially from Elizabeth. And so I love to talk about uh, Leader the dog and also the current Dole dog family. And uh, remember, we're in the archives and so we're gonna have a lot of, uh, not only those pictures that I showed you, but uh, we also have a lot of animal rights materials and humane treatment of animals and the protection of wild animals all included in our archive. Now, a lot of them uh, are more for adults to read. So I didn't wanna give you a whole lot to, to look at today because I wanted to show you some cute dog pictures. <laughs> but I will post the link to that website in the comments on Facebook Live. So uh, you would like to look at some of those archive uh, selections on animal rights and humane treatments and uh, wild animal protections please uh, go explore in our archives. So I'll, I'll post that in the comments. So we learned uh, about Socks the cat. And did you know when he lived in the White House, he actually got a lot of letters written to him. So kids just like you wrote letters to Socks the cat and Buddy the dog. And these were both uh, the Clintons uh, cats and dogs, and so they lived in the White House. And so I want you, what you to think of is, how would you uh, write a letter to leader the dog? Or you can also write a letter to your own pet in your own house. So maybe see what, what they're thinking about, ask them some questions. Because I'll read uh, some examples from what that sense of socks are cat. So dear socks, hi, my name is Greg. I'm 10 years old and I go to Barry School and I'm in fourth do you have those Secret Service cats bug you? Have you ever been on Air Force One? Uh, can you give me a job in the FBI? How do you feel about Bunny? Why does Bill Clinton pay more attention to you or Bunny? <laughs> uh, who do you like best? Chelsea, Hillary, or Bill? Do they have a picture of you in the White House? 
there's Sachs with Secretary Clinton. And then we also have another one. Dear buddy, my name is Danielle. I'm nine years old. How does it feel living in the house of Big Me? I love it. Uh, I have a dog too. Uh, if you could, please write back. Dear Socks, where do you sleep in the White House? Do you get paid for being the first cat? What do you do all day? So these are some just some questions that you could ask your dog or your cat. Uh, also practice your writing skills. Uh, you can also type it on a typewriter, but sometimes it's pretty cool to to write your own. This one. There's Socks on the stairwell. It says, Dear Socks, does Buddy bug you or do you bug Buddy? Did you like being the only pet in the White House, or would you rather be with Buddy? I think Socks is a better name than Fluffy or Whiskers. I have two turtles named Ike and Sophie. I think you are the cutest cat in the world. May I have a picture of you? I'll write to you again. Bye. Your friend, Hope. P.S. Do you like living in the White House? <laughs> so this is a cute book, and I invite you to write your own letter. Uh, I'm sure Leader or Blazer or Walter would love your letters also. But feel free to write to your own cat, uh, dog or cat or pet in your own house. Maybe so ask them some questions. What are you wondering about? <laughs> Another idea for a book is to learn about presidential pets. And there's been some pretty crazy pets that have lived in the White House. Like John Quincy Adams. Remember, a long time ago, 1825 to 1829. Did you know that he actually had a pet alligator? And uh, President Woodrow Wilson had a flock of sheep in Washington, D.C. And then another one, President Herbert Hoover. Had more alligators. <laughs> so it seems like alligators have been a pretty popular pit in the White House. So that's pretty interesting. But there have been plenty of cats and dogs also. Remember, uh, President uh, Barack Obama had two uh, Portuguese water dogs. Let me try to find, there we go. Uh, I forgot the names. Barry. No. Bo. That's it. <laughs> so they had a dog in the White House. So it'd be good to read some books. Remember, Lita wrote a book. Maybe you find that online, too. And here is my crack suggestion for you. If you have popsicle sticks or googly eyes or some sequins around the house along with some glue, you could make some puppet pets. So here we have an elephant and an alligator and a pig and a mouse and a fish. So see what you can find in your house. Get some craft sticks and construction paper and have some fun doing some uh, puppet pets and maybe put on your own puppet show also. Okay, well join us next time. We're going to be discussing Earth Day and natural resources and also what we can find in the archives here. So thanks for joining us. And there is a YouTube playlist on YouTube of all the Discover With Old videos that we've been doing the last couple weeks. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. See ya.